Okay, welcome back. This is chapter 13.2, The Nature of Liquids. Okay. The question is, how hot water, how hot should water be when you make coffee? Okay, if it's too hot, you're going to vaporize some of those liquid oils. If it's too cold, you might not dissolve the coffee into your cup. Okay, so we want to look at the physical properties of a liquid. Okay, I mentioned that gases flow, which might be surprising to you, but we know liquids flow. So if you see this picture, we can see the liquid flowing into the beaker, but we can also see the bromine flowing into the, the beaker too. So these are called fluids. Even though we think of liquids as fluids typically, gases are fluids too. However, there is a key difference between them. We said that there's no attraction for particles in a gas, but we know in liquids there's kind of the stickiness. You know how they wanted to stay together? And what does this come from? Well, we learned in a previous chapter about the intermolecular forces. Those little like Velcro things that kept the liquids together and kept things from going out, like hydrogen bonds and things like water. Um, that's why water doesn't boil at a lower temperature. Theoretically, it should by our periodic rules, but hydrogen bonding keeps it from happening. So we're talking about any intermolecular attraction. Sometimes it's just van der Waal forces, like um, dispersion forces, or it could be dipole interactions, and sometimes it could be, of course, hydrogen bonding. Okay, so there's this interplay between motions in particles and the attractions among the particles determines the physical properties. So in other words, it's not like a solid where it's really tightly held together, usually by bonding, but it's really just because of the intermolecular forces keep them together. And depending how strong they are might mean how easy it is, or not easy enough, to turn it into a gas. Okay, we know that liquids are more dense than gas. They're touching each other. So if you pour a liquid into a container, it's going to pour a set amount or set volume because it has a definite volume, but its shape can change into the shape of the container. Okay, if we try to increase the pressure on the liquid, it's not going to have very much effect because it's got a set volume. So in a gas, we can de decrease the volume of the gas by pushing it down. Of course, that's going to increase our pressure, but we can push it down like with a piston. Okay, the same is true for solids. If you start pushing, pressurizing a solid, it's going to resist unless it's, you put enough pressure that it breaks into little pieces, okay, and destroy it. Okay, what are ways liquids and gases are similar and one way which they are different? Okay, we just talked about that, so I'll let you describe it. Okay, they both can flow, so they take the shape of the container. The molecules in liquid, however, have attractions that aren't present in gases, so they kind of have a definite volume and will not simply fill their container, they'll just take the shape as much of the volume that they have. All right, evaporation. We think of several things, evaporation, boiling, vaporization. Okay, so if we look at the idea of vaporization, we have two forms of vaporization. We have evaporation, Okay, and we have boiling. Evaporation is basically any time you vaporize particles when you're not at the boiling point. Boiling point happens throughout the whole liquid. This is usually a surface phenomenon. Okay, and what happens is 
Remember how we said temperature is average kinetic energy? Well, if we have a container and everything's moving slightly different, every once in a while, one particle will get enough energy to go into the gas phase. That's what we're talking about with evaporation. In boiling, all the particles are getting enough energy to turn into gas. All right, so there's vaporization, and there's our definition of evaporation, which I just went over. So here's a picture. Here we have an open container, and we see that particles are starting to come out through evaporation. And they'll keep on, eventually it will totally evaporate. In the closed system, however, you'll reach an equilibrium, an area where there's only a set number that are in the gas phase, and the rest are in the liquid phase. And what happens here is that, say I want this one to become a gas now. If that happens, then one has to go back because this is a known ratio in a closed container. In an open container, these are going out into the world, so they're going to keep on evaporating. So that's why we stop for a bottle, for instance, to keep a liquid in. Whereas if we put a bottle of perfume and open it, after a while, all the perfume is gone. So we have like this escape velocity for evaporation. There has to be a certain kinetic energy for the molecules to start escaping the surface. And sometimes some of the particles that do escape collide with molecules in the air and go back into the liquid. So I mean, it's, it's an ongoing process. Of course, as we heat it, more of the particles have higher kinetic energy, so more of them can evaporate until we get enough energy that all of them can boil. And of course, things with higher kinetic energy are going to escape first. Things with lower will stay in a liquid phase. Now, what does that do? It makes, as those evaporate, okay, this is important. As things evaporate, those higher energy particles have escaped. That leaves lower energy particles there. So the average kinetic energy goes down, which means temperature will go down. So when you evaporate, for instance, when you sweat, okay, um, it's actually a cooling process because you're evaporating that liquid, okay? So it's a cooling process. So there you go. Oh, they use the word perspire instead of sweat, okay? So the water molecules absorb heat from your body, evaporate, that cools you off. That's why you perspire, to keep your body temperature lower on a hot day. Okay, I want you to explain this in late posit. They have enough kinetic energy to overcome the forces holding the particles together. Heat and liquid increases the average kinetic energy. That can basically increase the average kinetic energy, increase the number of particles with enough energy to escape. Okay, vapor pressure. This kind of is the idea that I showed you in that bottle that was closed. Okay, some of the particles will vaporize in a closed bottle and they'll hit the walls. Of course, that is a certain amount of pressure. That pressure is called vapor pressure and it acts as a lid. It kind of acts as a lid to keep other particles from evaporating. If one does, then another particle in the gas phase will go back into the liquid phase. So here's a diagram that shows it. So some are evaporating and then when you reach this equilibrium point, something has to condense or go back to liquid phase. So once you've reached this vapor pressure area where you have an equality between the rate of evaporation and the rate of condensation. Okay, we call this a dynamic equilibrium, meaning that dynamic means to move. Equilibrium means it's the same. So it's not a pure equilibrium, which would mean, okay, you've got this amount here and you've got this much here and it's equaled out. Dynamic means that it's not changing, the concentrations aren't changing, but there's different molecules that are making up each phase. 
So there are molecules moving, but it's not really discernible because the pressure isn't changing and the rate of evaporation of equals the rate of condensation. So the net gain and loss is not is, is zero. Okay. One of the things we do when we make coffee is we grind it. We don't want to grind it too much because it might, you know, allow some of those oils to vaporize. One, there's going to be energy involved when you're grinding it, obviously, from the blades, but you also, you know, are exposing it more to the outside air. Okay, so an increase in temperature of a contained liquid increases the vapor pressure. Okay, so that makes sense because if you warm it up, more things will have enough energy to escape. So change in temperature changes how many can be at the, in the gas phase, so the pressure is going to go up. All right. So let's look at three liquids. If we look at diethyl ether, we can see that it has a much higher vapor pressure, which means we have a lot more things in the gas phase as we increase temperature compared to water, which is about one sixth as high a vapor pressure. So, um, you know, at 100 degrees at the boiling point. So if we look at, you know, at 20 degrees, which is about room temperature, we see a huge difference between diethyl ether, ethanol, and water. Okay, something that turns into gas very easily through evaporation is called volatile. So this is how we measure vapor pressure. We have our container, our closed container, and we have a tube coming out of it, and there's mercury, a U-shaped tube with mercury in it. So as the pressure increases, it's going to press, push the mercury up this tube, and we can measure then the dis distance between these two things, and it'll be in millimeters of mercury, which we could recalibrate into kilopascals. So we can see what the vapor pressure is. When we heat the ethanol to a higher temperature, we see that the vapor pressure goes up. Okay, this is a play positive question. In a sealed gas liquid system at constant temperature, eventually, there will be no more evaporation. The rate of condensation decreases to zero. The rate of condensation exceeds the rate of evaporation. The rate of evaporation equals the rate of condensation. Okay, go for it. I hope you picked D. Okay, boiling point. What's boiling point? Okay, it's the temperature at which particles throughout the liquid have enough kinetic energy, kinetic energy to vaporize. That's boiling point. So that you've given it enough energy that all the particles can now vaporize because you've changed the average kinetic energy to a point where they have enough sufficient energy to escape the liquid phase and form into the gas phase. So the boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid is just equal to the external pressure of the liquid. So, in other words, at one atmosphere, for water to boil at 100 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure has now gotten to basically one atmosphere. Now the pressure changes, for instance, if we go to a lower or a higher mountain, this if you ever looked at a cake mix, you'll see high altitude directions. The boiling point goes down because it requires less energy to get the lower atmospheric pressure. So say the atmospheric pressure is 0.95 of an atmosphere. It doesn't have to go as far. So therefore, the temperature will be lower. So even though you're boiling something, you're not at as high a temperature, so something might not cook as easily. All right, so at sea level, okay, we see that if we are at 100 degrees C, we start boiling. At Mount Everest, we're going to see a boiling at 70 degrees C. I'll have you take a chance. I'll keep that slide there for a second for you to read through it. Okay.
Okay. Now, you can use the graph that I show you. There's several substances. Chloroform, ethanol, water, ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid is basically acetic acid, which is what we find in vinegar. So you'll see that everything starts increasing as we increase the pressure. Okay, So we see that the vapor pressure increases with temperature. So boiling is going to occur at the points where we have this cross of standard pressure. So chloroform is looks like it's going to be somewhere a little under 50 degrees C. Ethanol a little bit like 75 it looks like. 100, almost 100 for water and then over 100 for acetic acid. These are the boiling points when it reaches those temperatures. So if we move the pressure down to 60, we're going to see lower boiling points for all those things. Now, boiling is a cooling process similar to evaporation. That doesn't make sense because we usually think boiling means that you're going to get hotter because you're putting all that heat in. Well, that's because we're thinking of water. Okay. So when we make the vapor, it's at the same temperature as the boiling liquid. But it has more stored energy. Okay. So the steam now can burn you more because there's more energy in it. So the liquid that's left behind is going to be a little cooler until it gets up there. Okay, the normal boiling point, this is an important thing, 101.3 kilopascals or one atmosphere. Here's normal boiling points for several different substances in a chart form. Okay, I'm going to ask you to answer this question based on what we've talked about. Okay, so the boiling point decreases, altitude increases. So the boiling point of water is lower on Mount McKinley than it is in Death Valley, which is so is now Death Valley is going to be higher than at sea level. Okay, here are some concepts you should know. Okay, make sure you took stop the tape, replay it, and take those notes. All right, sounds good.